Hello everyone. Today I'm going to present the research paper for the governance, a critical approach from the Global South perspective. Uh, let me introduce myself briefly. This is Andres Patino. I'm from Colombia. Uh, this is my background. I'm a lawyer. I hold a graduate diploma in private law and a master of law and development from the University of Melbourne. I'm also a lecturer in global commercial contract law and investigation methodology. And I work as a legal counsel for the general director of the metropolitan area of the Abura Valley, which is the environmental protection authority in the region. Climate change is a global issue that is affecting the weather patterns significantly in the world. Deforestation and forest degradation represent about 20% of the world greenhouse gases, and it is considered as the second source after the burning of fossil fuels. The IPCC established that emissions from land use change contribute to about 70% of these emissions. On the other hand, Red Plus is an international mechanism to mitigate climate change developed by the parties of the UNFCCC in order to encourage developing countries to avoid deforestation and forest degradation. This mechanism emerged as a climate change solution in the COP11 in Montreal. Legally speaking, Red Plus is itself emerging as an international regime within the international law with an independent set of norms, decision-making procedures, and organizations. This regime is integrated by international bodies such as the FAO, the UNEP, the UNDP, and the World Bank, but also by a state and non-state participants. Basically, this image describes the process to implement Red Plus. Red Plus is a process which consists of three phases, namely readiness, implementation, and payment for results. Countries interested in the implementation of Red Plus have to fulfill the requirement of each phase. These phases are evaluated through four tools. First one is national monitoring system. The second one is forest references. The third one is safeguards information system. And the last one is national strategies and action plans. Now I will explain the Colombian context. To implement these projects, Colombia included Red Plus as a national strategy in the National Development Plan with the name of N Red Plus. And Red Plus is one of the four plans included in the national policy to tackle climate change in Colombia. Its primary pur purpose is to prepare the country to the, the implementation of Red Plus projects. To achieve this purpose, the national government has developed several initiatives to reduce and revert the loss of forest stock and to mitigate the effects of the forest activities. Now, I will analyze Red Plus in Colombia from the critical approach to sustainable development presented by authors such as Jason Hickel, Arturo Escobar, and John Robinson. My central argument is how developed countries use Red Plus project to wipe quotas of greenhouse emissions to keep their consumption level and sustain economic growth at the expenses of the third world. To explain this argument, I will analyze three issues in the Colombian context. First, I will show how the mechanisms to set up carbon stock price and the low price of carbon stock in the market is affecting the development of Red Plus initiatives in Colombia. Second, I will evaluate the limitations of the results-based payment system and its negative implication. Third, I will study the impact of Red Plus projects over local communities and indigenous rights. Regarding the price, the price of carbon credits is defined for the emission trading systems according to the rules of supply and demand. However, Colombian Red Plus projects are not focused on creating carbon credit supply to the 
carbon market since Colombia doesn't have an emission trading system. In this way, developed countries and international institutions are who define the carbon credits price and have control over carbon stock located in developing countries. Nevertheless, and paradoxically, developing countries do not participate in setting up the price of the carbon credits produced by their own forest. Consequently, these projects are not attractive for local communities because of their low profit and the high cost of the initial investment for the readiness stage. On the other hand, the price of carbon credits is just focused on carbon emissions, putting aside other ecological benefits and ecosystem services involved in Red Plus. These situations reveal that developed countries are not reducing their, their levels of pollution. They are just hiding the pollution behind compensation to protect the forest in developing countries. The second issue is the results-based payment system. This system was established in the Paris Agreement to guarantee that the resources invested in climate change will have an adequate and predictable impact. There are, however, several limitations, such as the high number of requirements to obtain, fi to obtain finance, finance uh, the high level of normative bindingness of the conditions, and the omission of non-carbon benefits to define the carbon price. Additionally, in Colombia, there are other issues, such as the limited funding, the low price of carbon credits, the accumulative requirements to obtain the financial aid, and the long-term implementation times for these projects. These issues are discouraging local communities because they have to wait more than five years to receive the first payment. Indeed, the Colombian landowners prefer to use the forest to other activities rather than conservation because those activities are more profitable, less complicated, and they have a faster return on investment. Consequently, payment systems should consider not only carbon emissions, but also the ecological and environmental benefits to recognize outputs based on performance. The third issue is the impact on local communities and indigenous rights. The implementation of Red Plus projects is creating negative impacts among local communities, especially for those communities that depend on the forest for their livelihood, food and shelter. Besides, indigenous people and forest communities are more likely than others to be socially and economically vulnerable to the side effects of Red Plus activities because the, for the forest represents its only source of income. Local communities and indigenous right people in Colombia do not trust in Red Plus, in Red Plus projects because they feel that these initiatives are unconnected to the community. So in conclusion, through this analysis, we could understand how the concept of sustainability and climate change can be made use by developed countries to maintain their levels of pollution. These situations unveils the lack of commitment of developed countries to reduce their greenhouse emission uh, genuinely, on the other hand, this analysis also depicts the adverse effects of the implementation of Red Plus for developing countries as Colombia, since the low price of carbon credits and the result-based payment system is impacting local communities and indigenous rights. Consequently, we can conclude that the role of developed countries to face climate change must be restated. Developed, co developed countries should lead a significant and paradigmatic or civilizational transformation, reducing their greenhouse emissions genuinely and addressing deforestation drivers related directly with massive consumed 
to create a viable future for further generations. Regarding the Colombian context, we may conclude that the Red Plus uh, should be reevaluated, re including a broader range of forests and land activities and improve the accountability and of safeguards and the socializations of the projects uh, and their objectives to guarantee local communities and indigenous rights. Finally, Red Plus should change the result-based payment by a performance-based payment. Moreover, the price of the carbon credit should include non-carbon benefits and developing countries and landowners should have incidents in setting out the price of the stock. Thus, climate change for private red, red plus projects should be regulated through the UNFCCC and the COP trying to find a consensus to avoid long-lasting debts for developing countries. Thank you.